Hello guys, welcome back to Tech Savara. My name is Peter and today we're going to discuss what was once kernel extensions, but on Apple we've moved to something called system extensions. Okay, let's dive in. All right, so what are kernel extensions? Kernel extensions are extensions to the kernel. Well, they're basically uh, a way for you to get access to the systems that the kernel runs on, right? So if you know anything about operating systems, you'll understand that the kernel is what basically allows you access to things like that. Low level file system interrupts, uh, graphics, uh, the connected devices, all those kind of things that make the computer run. Now, once upon a time when we had the ability for uh, us to create kernel extensions without really any issues on Mac OS, without any kind of uh, hurdles, uh, you know, we could create a kernel extension for a device driver, we could create a, uh, you know, a bit of software that would give access to the low-level uh, file system interrupts, uh, things like that. Now, one of the things, one of the problems with uh, direct access uh, to the system is that a malicious actor can find a way to leverage these kernel extensions depending on the system or maybe there's a bug in the kernel extension uh, and there are other problems related to security. So in the new Apple M1 uh, systems where they've really focused a lot on security, kernel extensions can only be really activated and run, especially in um, large enterprise systems uh, if you have certain security settings set up which you need to do manually. And what what has uh, really been replaced? What what Apple Apple has created in place of kernel extensions are a more specific set of, uh, I guess, APIs that allow us to access very specific things that we want to do. So what I mentioned before is you could use kernel extensions to create device drivers. Now, what we have now with the new Mac OS, I think Catalina and above, is we have system extensions and there's a thing called driver kit so what i want to do is dive into driver kit uh, and i will uh, explore the documentation explore what you can do uh, and we'll look uh, to see how we can create a driver kit using xcode so you know dri device drivers are one part of it you've got you say if you wanted to create uh, antivirus software that's a, a common way you would need to access the low level systems if you had some uh, the functionality that you need to communicate with um, with the file system, with the interrupts, with the devices, uh, then you would need uh, to use the system extension stuff. But we're going to focus on driver kit, so let's get straight to it. Let's dive in and explore driver kit and system extensions. Okay, here we are, and uh, we are going to dive in and explore driver kit. I've opened up the no, a few a few resources here. We have uh, the driver kit uh, documentation directly, and from here we can kind of look at which particular frameworks there are. Uh, specifically, uh, driver kit um, is quite low level. It's C plus plus only, uh, and. That's fine. We can we can have a look. I mean, there's also USB driver kit. My uh, goal is I actually have what I'm recording here is uh, the uh, Nikon Z30, and it connects via USB-C to the app to the uh, Apple here, and I'm looking at how possibly to you know read what's going on and maybe uh, look at how we can you know control it just as an experiment to see what we can do with with the driver kit now. Essentially, this is what you would want to do, say, for enterprise software, if you have a very specific uh, unit that you're working with for a client, or if you're building your own device that connects to a Mac system, you would definitely use this. Or if you're using like, if you're building like a general device, then uh, you would also use this. So uh, the, another really good resource and a great starting point is this uh, system extensions and driver kit video. It's in the um, you know WWDC videos from 2019, and it is system extensions and driver kit. Uh, USB driver kit uh, framework to develop custom or non-class compliant USB devices for use with Mac OS. The objects in this framework serve as providers for your driver. Use them as is to access the device configuration. So 
let's have a look at uh, Xcode. It's available at macOS for Intel and Apple Silicon Macs. Uh, how would we do this here? Uh, let's see. We've got we've got a we've got Xcode here. We'll open up. A, uh, we've got Driver Kit, and I don't think there is any other. Uh, there is there is IO Kit driver. There isn't anything else. We've got uh, other here, which doesn't uh, really uh, allow us to explore uh, driver kit or USB driver kit in this case. Uh, we do have some samples, so we'll probably work through that. So we'll create a new driver and we go test uh, Z30 driver. Uh, with regards to debugging, it looks like you actually have to create an app or a piece of software and then inject the driver into your uh, app. So I don't know how far we'll get with uh, creating uh, the driver and testing it, but here we go, test set 30 driver. Now, let's uh, move this over here a little bit while we explore the documentation again. So in this case, we have a USB driver kit, uh, essentials uh, driver kit sample code, and we have these providers. So. Use USB device descriptors. So in the documentation, we also have a you know walkthrough here. You know, implementing driver system ex extensions or texts. Well, the texts now because we're using driver kit. Implement low level services using system extensions. Yep, that's what we want to do, and we want to communicate with custom hardware. So in this case, we we have the Z30. We probably won't be able to figure out what the data says. We'll, I'm just trying to see if I can actually connect to it and read it. So uh, when the user attaches a new device, hardware device, the kernel searches for any decks that handle the device. Okay, so I guess we'll try and have to figure out how to connect to it. Um, that may not even be possible. So Apple provides drivers for all standard-based hardware protocols that Mac computers support. Create custom drivers only for protocols and features unique to your hardware. You can also use a codeless DEX to map your hardware to one of Apple's built-in drivers. Mm, all right, so uh, let's have a look. We've got a we've got creating. So you got this other page here, which is creating the actual uh, driver. And I also have uh, another window open here, which is debugging. Uh, and we'll, we'll run through that and have a look. Uh, but I guess in this case, we do have some sample code. So let's jump into the sample code and see what we can find here. Uh, functions. Where was it? Oh, here we go. Driver kit sample code. Driver kit SDK provides a stable. Yep, we know that. Uh, essentials communicating between a driver extension and a client app. So there's not really much here connecting to a network driver. We're, we're not using that. Uh, driver kit sample app, a Swift UI app. Oh, interesting. So we, there, there is uh, some sample app code that we can just pull out. Uh, maybe we can do this and the null driver, the dex itself. So there seems to be in multiple targets here, right? So you would have a project, an Xcode project, uh, and create the app and create the driver. To run the sample project, first you need to build and run driver kit sample app. So where is this? Oh, we can download it. There we go. So we would pro okay, let's let's start with this and see what we can get. Maybe it makes more sense, but downloads, uh, maybe it makes more sense to open this. Just uh, communicating. Oh, there we go. Got a lot of stuff here. Let's close this other stuff. Got. Don't need any of this. All right. So, communication client app. So we have. Let's move this into our developer. Scratch folder. Uh, where is? RW Scratch. Oh. Testing? No? All right. RW. Maybe there's another folder here called Scratch. No, nothing here called Scratch. Xcode Tools, Xcode. Anyway, let's, uh, let's not get distracted here. Move this over to here. Uh, and we'll see what. This has, we have a configuration here and we have the sample. So we can open the Xcode project. This is like a second one, trust and open. And this should, okay, so there's <laughs> there's a whole, 
there's a whole kettle of fish. Uh, kettle of fish? I don't know what that means, but there's a whole stack of stuff we can look through here uh, to explore. And so essentially the process I would use, we'd have this app and we'd also have a driver, right? So we have two targets that we would create a, an app target and a driver target. So you can see here we have our test driver target. So we would then, you know, do the same thing. Well, um, what kind of app is this? Uh, this would be a general Mac OS. All right, so we would have a sample app. Uh, we would create a new new project in here. Uh, no, create a template file. We'd probably add uh, add package dependencies. Uh, no, we want a new project. New project here. No, we don't, we don't want to add this here. We want to add, we've got the driver. We want a new target, new scheme. Okay. New target. We want to target, there we go. So multi-platform, we have an app that we want to add. And we'll make it the test Z30 app. And so, this process uh, will will be the same thing, you know? So we've got the test driver, we have the test app. Uh, the project is, you know, I should have done it the other way. I should have gone and created the app first and then done the driver and we can, uh, well, that's fine. I mean, it doesn't really make much difference. The project is, the Xcode project contains both and it has two different targets. So that's what we, that's what we want to uh, uh, actually do. And we'll, we will uh, do it for my Mac and we will, only support the Mac, uh, not iPad, just for the sake of simplicity. All right, so what? A, let's go have a look in through the uh, driver sample code. So we have the sample project that we'll go through. So we we have to turn off SIP, uh, so our utility system extension control. Uh, it sounds like there's a kind of lot of configuration steps. Uh, okay, install and run the driver extension in macOS. To run the sample app in macOS, use the scheme selector. Yeah, that, pretty straightforward. We we'll just select the scheme. To install the Dext on macOS, the app uses system extensions framework to install and activate Dext as described in installing system extensions and drivers. Okay, so there's a section here on how we would do it. So we would install it this way. Activate and use. Okay, so this would be installing an act system extensions and then we would I guess debug it so this okay so we do have a great uh, structure to work with uh, and we the here here is um, that Mac OS uh, we would need to do a lot of these configuration steps To run the sample code project, first you need to build and run the driver kit sample app, which installs the driver. You can set up the project to build with automatic signing, recommended or manual signing. To use automatic signing. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if we can just, signing and capabilities. Example, we would need to provision. Okay, automatically manage signing. Let's see what happens. Wait, yep. Okay, let's choose our team. Okay. We're just gonna sample app. No signing certificate. Maybe uh, we can change the sample sample app code. Uh, interesting, because it's a sample. Maybe we change the bundle identifier to be something specific. So maybe this isn't available. Interesting. Okay, so in order to do this, terminal turn off SIP, disabling enable system integrity protection. So what does this say here? We currently don't have access to this membership resource to resolve this issue. Agree to the latest pro okay. So we won't go into too much about setting this up and let's go straight into the driver itself. Uh Swift async cover. I say so the driver communications view model and view. The great thing is this is actually Swift UI. This is great. I mean I'm I'm I'd be interested in to actually explore exploring this a lot more. I mean th there's a lot of opportunity here to create uh direct products and uh, you know 
that communicate with a Mac uh, using drivers instead of uh, building you know, specific uh, transport protocol or using existing transport protocols. Uh, let's have a look at the driver. So this one doesn't do anything. Uh, okay, the driver, uh, we have the standard setup, initialization, start and stopping of the driver given the IO service provider uh, and free. So we also have the driver code for initialization. Uh, here we initialize the driver with its uh, data. So we allocate, essentially we have to allocate memory for, for our driver here. Uh, once we do the start, we can look at logging. It's great that logging is available. Uh, and then stop. I mean, the first thing that I would want to do is figure out how to detect what specific device is connected and how to read USB data from that. So I think looking into this documentation, if you want to build with manual sign, do the phone. Okay, so it's really only this we need to do. But we also need to accept the terms and conditions, which I'm not going to go into. So we're not going to dive too far into this. Uh, I think the main thing is, is we found a great sample app to work from. We found the video that we have, uh, which we can reference, and we can then use each of these pieces to kind of dra drag and drop and, and mix and match what we want to do in our own driver. So uh, guys, thanks for uh, listening. This quick introduction, exploring where we can go from uh, with the driver kit. I would be really excited to spend some time uh, delving into this and, and building and figuring out how to connect to this camera. Uh, I think it would be pretty interesting to see what we can do in terms of, you know, if with the phone, if we have certain functionality that we can use to con communicate with uh, the camera here. And I think, you know, there's probably software out there that does it to use the phone as a monitor or something similar uh, or iPad. Uh, and it's pretty exciting. Uh, I would love to continue doing this uh, diving in um, we're going to uh, wrap this up for now and we're going to look and explore something different next week uh, I think you know we've done the driver stuff to look at how that you know how where we can go and what we can explore uh, I think next week I'll still stick with iOS and I think we can have a look let's say let's go into metal metal is a good one uh, it's, you know, 3D rendering, hardware acceleration, video games for Mac. Uh, I think with Microsoft and Activision Blizzard being one company and Apple going into the gaming space, it's um, an interesting time for games, an interesting time for, uh, you know, custom game engines, rendering engines. But I think there's something to Apple's metal kit that is more than just for games. So let's have a quick exploration of that next week. Thanks for uh, exploring uh, system extensions and driver kit. No longer kernel extensions. We don't really use them anymore. And I'll see you at the next video. Bye. Okay. Testing. Ah, oh, so pretty good, actually. It's good when you go for a jog and you, you feel refreshed, like on Friday. Uh, most Fridays, it's like uh, having to have to, without the run, I definitely don't feel 100% like I would if I go for a run in the morning. And so I get all this difficult stuff out of the way. Anyway, feeling good. Let's get into it.